In this video, I will discuss the measurements of oxygen demand. This is important because when a waste is discharged by a pipe, the waste has organics and also nitrogenous compounds that exert an oxygen demand. This is shown by the dissolved oxygen concentration, which would be perhaps equal to the saturation constant in the river before the pipe and the organics or nitrogenous compounds are discharged. When these are discharged, bacteria in the river begin to consume those organics and nitrogenous as food, and in doing so, they decrease the oxygen because these organisms require oxygen to live. Now, if the oxygen gets down below the level that fish require to live, then this becomes septic. And the rule of thumb is that between two and four parts per million, fish begin to die. At two parts per million, even bottom feeding fish, such as carp, die. Now after this point in the river, even if all of the organics and nitrogenous waste are consumed, the DO will continue to be low until re-aeration is performed by dissolved oxygen dissolving into the river. This rate can be slow, and so this whole cross-section of the river could perhaps take several kilometers or miles for the DO to come back up. The effects of biodegradable waste is that first, biological growth is stimulated. Again, the waste is the food for the microorganisms. Two compounds are given here to represent carbonaceous BOD, or carbon compounds that, it's, that are food sources, and nitrogenous BOD, or ni nitrogen compounds that are food. The first here is glucose, which is a representative organic compound, and the next is ammonium. Bacteria consume glucose and ammonium, and these reactions here are biochemical reactions, and so these reactions occur within the cell. And you'll see here that oxygen is consumed during this biological metabolism. Carbonaceous BOD is the oxygen demand that is exerted due to organic compounds. Here, six moles of oxygen would be consumed within the bacterial cell per mole of glucose. Nitrogenous BOD is the oxygen demand exerted by the ammonia compound. Now, once organisms consume that waste, either the organic or nitrogenous compounds, and they consume oxygen as they metabolize it, then the river will experience a dissolved oxygen deficit. A deficit will be defined in this module as D, and we will mathematically define that as the saturation DO minus the actual DO in the river. And you can look up the saturation constant of a DO Reaeration will be defined as the entry of oxygen from the atmosphere. Reaeration decreases the deficit or increases the DO. Within environmental engineering, there are three ways to discuss the oxygen demand. The first is the theoretical oxygen demand, which can be calculated based on stoichiometry. The second is chemical oxygen demand, and the third is biological oxygen demand. We will discuss each of these in brief. Theoretical oxygen demand can be calculated from a balanced biochemical reaction. In the below example, we have glucose being oxidized biochemically to CO2 and water. This reaction is known in biology as respiration. The theoretical oxygen demand is simply calculated by reading the chemical reaction there are six moles of oxygen that are consumed per mole of glucose, and this is glucose. You multiply by the molecular weights, and when you do that, the moles of oxygen cancel out, the moles of glucose cancel out, and you're left with grams of oxygen per gram of glucose. This is equal to 1.067 grams of oxygen per gram of glucose. This is referred to as the COD equivalent. This is useful because if I told you that 100 milligrams per liter of glucose was going to be dumped into the river, you could multiply by the COD equivalent. And if it's gram of oxygen per gram of glucose, it's also milligram of oxygen per milligram of glucose. So the units cancel, and you would know that that amount of glucose would consume 106.7 milligrams of oxygen per liter. This is the oxygen demand 
that would be exerted or the DO that would be consumed by biological activity. In the next problem, I'm showing you an example of the nitrogenous oxygen demand that would be consumed from 20 milligrams per liter of ammonia as nitrogen. One thing to note is this unit, ammonia as nitrogen, is a common unit in environmental engineering because ammonia, NH3, combines with a proton to form ammonium. And this reaction is highly pH dependent. So that we don't have to measure ammonium and ammonia all the time, we typically just measure the nitrogen content as ammonia or ammonium. I'll demonstrate how this unit shakes out for us. This reaction that I show you is a reaction that's commonly referred to as nitrification. And you'll learn this reaction. Bacteria that consume ammonium with oxygen and produce nitrate perform nitrification. This biochemical reaction has an oxygen demand of two moles of oxygen per mole of ammonium. For every mole of ammonium, there is one mole of nitrogen. And so we can write this as ammonia as nitrogen. We are literally interested in the nitrogen and not the ammonia here. Then we will multiply by the molecular weights. And you'll see here that this is the molecular weight of nitrogen. This is equal to 4.57 grams of oxygen per gram of ammonia as in. This is the COD equivalent of ammonia. To finish this problem, we begin with 20 milligrams per liter of ammonia as in. We'll multiply by the COD equivalent, 4.57 milligrams of oxygen per milligram of ammonia as in. And we will see that as that ammonia is metabolized by bacteria, they would consume 91.4 milligrams of oxygen per liter. The second way that we discuss oxygen demand is as the chemical oxygen demand, or COD. This is a laboratory test that utilizes sulfuric acid, a strong oxidant. The test takes 2.5 hours for the oxidation, a dichromate is used to measure a UV change, and with this you get some indication of the components in the water that can be oxidized. This is performed much more often than the other measurements, and so is a critical aspect to process performance testing, mostly because of the short time the test takes. Now one thing to note of COD is that both biodegradable and unbiodegradable compounds will be oxidized chemically. For this reason, it overestimates the biological demand. The third way that we discuss oxygen demand is as biological oxygen demand. This is also a laboratory assay that utilizes bacteria in a closed bottle and a sample of the wastewater is added to that bottle. The initial DO is measured and after five days the final DO is measured, and this gives us literally the biological oxygen demand from the five days of inoculation. This is the standard measurement that is required in permits. Unbiodegradable compounds would not exert an oxygen demand. Only things that the bacteria within the bottle can actually degrade or metabolize exert the oxygen demand. The test requires that bacteria are viable meaning living, and that the biological decomposition of the waste occurs within the five days of measurement. There is also a term called ultimate BOD. This would be the BOD that, was met, that would be measured if you did an initial and then you took a DO reading after infinite amount of time, meaning the kinetics of the degradation could be very slow. It's hard to ever measure the ultimate BOD in a laboratory, but it, what it does represent is the maximum biodegradation or the maximum oxygen demand from complete biodegradation. The ultimate BOD is given a few symbols within your textbook, UBOD or BOD infinite or L0. The symbols within your textbook here are either L for the BOD that remains, or BOD, which is going to represent the BXZ, 
the VOD exerted or removed over time. In this graph here, you see time on the x-axis and the oxygen consumption or the VOD on the y. At time zero, you have your ultimate VOD or the initial VOD that remains. As this VOD, and again, VOD represents the waste that will be degraded or the waste that exerts the oxygen demand. As that waste is degraded, then the VOD that is exerted increases. At any time, such as 30 minutes here, you have an L30 and you have a BOD 30. There's a learning objective that asks you to compare the COD versus BOD. What you need to understand is that the COD is used for process performance testing and BOD is used for compliance testing. Process performance testing is utilized by operators to check performance. It can be measured multiple times a day. It is not reported to officials. The BOD is measured and it takes five days for that laboratory measurement and it is required by the MPDS permit. Because it takes five days, it is not useful for process control. Operators need to respond for, to mistakes within the process more than every five days. The COD test, in contrast, takes 2.5 hours. COD to BOD ratios can be utilized to indicate the biodegradability of a waste. For instance, if I was called for a consulting job and someone asked me to design a biological process for wastewater treatment, the first question I would ask is what is the BOD of the wastewater and what is the COD of the wastewater? When you take the ratio of the BOD to COD, if the ratio is one, what this tells you is that all of the COD is biodegradable. 100% of everything that's oxidized by sulfuric acid is biodegradable. And what I would infer from that is that the wastewater can be biologically treated quite easily. This is also true for a wide range of BOD to COD ratios. For most municipal wastewater, we have a BOD to COD ratio of 0.3 to 0.8. Above 0.5, we would say that it's easily biodegradable. Below 3, it is either toxic to microorganisms or requires a special organism or, or specifically acclimated organisms. It's not easily biologically treated. The ultimate BOD is always less than or equal to the COD. Again, the BOD represents the biologically degradable fraction and COD represents chemically oxidizable. It's not possible for the COD to be less than the BOD. Sulfuric acid would be able to oxidize everything at least that biology can. So the UBOD is either less than or equal to the COD. If it is equal, this means that everything is biologically degradable. We've discussed theoretical oxygen demand, which can be calculated, chemical oxygen demand, which is measured with sulfuric acid, and takes a mere hours to measure, and BOD, which is used for MPDS permits, so is the measurement that must be done, but requires five days by convention and requires bacteria. It represents the true biological oxygen demand. Not everything that happens in a BOD bottle would happen in a river, but it is our best estimation of what would occur in a river to cause that DO sag after waste discharge. And that is ultimately what we are interested in, the impact on the waste on the receiving water body. We do not want to cause fish kills in the river because of releasing BOD.